Welcome to the Southampton International Boat Show 2021. Now the boat behind me is the Hansa 418. For those of you who know the history of us, we owned the Hansa before we owned Ruby Rose. Owned the Hans 320 in about 2007. Now I absolutely love that boat, it flew along and this 418, the 40, 41 foot version, is a boat that probably would happily take you across the Atlantic or you know, even further. We know a lot of Hansas do the arc, do the kind of Atlantic circuit, and we also know that they circumnavigate. So let's go inside and see what we think of the Hansa 418. Hello everybody, you've got me again. Let's take a look on board the Hans 418. First of all, let's take a look at the swimming platform. Super handy, let me tell you, when you are like in the Caribbean or the Mediterranean, anywhere you might want to go for a swim off the back of the boat. So along with that wide open transom, you've also got these twin helms and they're mounted on these slim pedestals. I'm not sure if they're carbon or whether they're just black. But either way, I think we can tell just by looking at this boat that it is performance orientated. It's got that kind of racy vibe. The cockpit itself is really spacious. It looks extremely comfortable. I remember on our hands many years ago, the cockpit, the seating in the cockpit was actually really, really comfortable. The lines all run back to the helm stations, making it very easy to shorthand or perhaps even single hand this boat. They're also held captive, so there's no exposed lines, which I love. It makes it all very neat and tidy. Overall, the impression I'm getting from this cockpit is that it is aesthetically a really neat, tidy and modern, comfortable space. It's also clearly set up for double handing or single handing, so really easy short-handed sailing. And also it's set up well for being at anchor. So that nice spacious cockpit, the swim platform, I think it's covering a lot of bases. So, so far so good. I really like this cockpit. We've got some opening hatches here just underneath that dodger which affords you really good forward visibility. I'm not sure about the purpose of those opening hatches being positioned underneath the dodger as they are. I'm not sure that they would actually give you much airflow, but nonetheless, not a bad thing. And now let's take a little meander forward. You've got nice clear side deck to walk up, flush mounted hatches, which you know that we're big fans of. You've got that rail to hold on to uh, just on the coach roof there. I'm also pleased to see the flexi teak here as an option rather than hardwood. And I think while we're here, let's take a look at some of the dimensions and specifications of this boat. We've got a length overall of 12.4 meters or 40.8 feet a waterline length of 11.99 metres and 37.5 feet and a beam of 4.17 metres or 13.8 feet, so quite beamy, we saw that at the transom, and a displacement of 9.8 tonnes, so pretty light as well. You've got a draft of 2.1 metres, or 6.1 feet, but you've also got an option to have a shallow draft keel, so that would be 1.74 metres or 5.9 feet. And you've got a total sail area of 87 square metres or 936 square feet. She's got an air draft of 19.6 metres or 64 feet, which does make this boat ICW friendly, although only just. Let's move downstairs now and have a look at the interior of this Hans 418. Minimal, spacious and modern is the description that springs to mind here. The layout is pretty much what I would expect from a boat of this size and type. Plenty of windows letting some natural light in which is lovely. You've got two generous settees, one of which is a U-shape, so you've got plenty of seating space for yourself and guests down here, and obviously a table that can be configured in different ways. You leave the leaf down and you've got that thoroughfare that you can walk through, or you bring it up and you've got a massive dining table. Now we don't have a typical nav station as such. We've got a little desk that is next to one of the settees. I think it really depends on what kind of sailing cruising you want to do and whether a nav station is a priority for you. I know that we love a nav station, but it also for us doubles as a workstation or a work desk. So really, again, it comes down to personal preference. We've got a galley, an L-shaped galley, which looks like it's got some pretty good storage actually for a 40 foot boat. I think it's pretty generously sized and it also looks really nice. They've got a neat custom made cover for the double sink, which is great because it increases the amount of bench space that you have. And there's also that top loading fridge just there as well. 
There are definitely some details I'm seeing that makes me think this design has been well thought through. There is like a splashback behind the sink to prevent any kind of splashes going into the saloon. And there are definitely grab rails as well next to the companionway and also next to the galley. The galley also has two opening hatches, so really good ventilation, which is very important. Going forward into the fore peak, this is the main cabin. And look, I'm not a massive fan of master cabins in the V berth because it's not the most comfortable part of the boat to sleep in when it's when you're either underway or you're in a rolling anchorage. And the master cabin also has its own small private heads. Alternatively, you can option this larger master cabin with more storage, a larger berth, but no private heads. You've actually got four opening hatches in this cabin, which is very generous. So I'm impressed about the ventilation side of things. You know that that's my kind of minor obsession. You've got quite a bit of storage in here. You've got those covers that are mounted up above the bed and you've also got a hanging closet as well as some underbed storage. So I think from a storage point of view and a ventilation point of view, this cabin is good. The main heads is opposite the galley. It comes off the saloon and you, it is quite nice. You've got quite a bit of storage in here as well, which is great, but there is no separate shower stall. So for those of you for whom this is a priority, then obviously this is a bit of an issue. I do like a separate shower stall. It just keeps everything really neat and tidy and it cuts down on the amount of cleaning that you have to do. But I would not expect a separate shower stall on a boat of this size. I think above kind of 44, 45 foot, then that is something that you would expect. But on a 40 foot boat, not so much. It is worth noting though that you can option this layout, which gives you a separate shower stall next to the galley. On this particular layout, we have the two quarter berths or two double berths in the aft part of the boat. You can also option one quarter berth and storage on the other side if you want. And look, these aft berths, or some might call them a coffin berth, they're pretty cozy, let's face it. They've also got two opening hatches, but they, those hatches both open into the cockpit. So when you're at anchor, you can imagine that the breeze is coming kind of down the boat from the forward part of the boat down to the aft part of the boat and the cockpit if you've got the spray hood up doesn't have much airflow at all so I think that these cabins might tend to be a little bit on the stuffy side when you're actually at anchor and sleeping in them but I think for a weekend or even just a whole summer holiday then you know you can put up with that that's fine I don't know whether I would want to personally live on this boat and have one of these cabins as my permanent bedroom, but I don't think that is what this boat is really designed for. Each aft cabin has quite a large amount of hanging storage, which is really great. And they've also both got some additional cupboards as well. So while we take a look at the engine bay, which is located under the companionway steps, I'll give you my final thoughts. This boat I think is a really great option if you are a weekend sailor, you want some really good, lively sailing in a responsive yacht, which is lightweight, fun to sail. I think this is a good option. You've also got some great living space. You could easily take this boat, say if you're based in the UK for a summer in France, you could keep it in the Med and go for your summer cruise in the Med. I think it would be perfect for that. I think if you're planning to do any ocean crossings, if you're planning to live on board, would this boat be the one I would choose? Absolutely not. It's too lightweight. Any ocean crossings will probably be quite uncomfortable in those large following seas. You would be bouncing around. And the dimensions inside, although they're generous in some ways, such as a saloon, those aft cabins are not for living in. So I think that this is more of a weekend cruiser or a holiday boat than a full-time liveaboard. So what do we think of the Hansa 418? For the price that it is at, it is a very, very reasonably specced boat. The sail away price on this is 298,000 pounds. And that's sail away, and yes, it includes the VAT. 300,000 pounds for a 42 foot boat spec'd out. Boat show deals always give you like little extras. So it presents really good value for money. What do I like about it? Light, airy interior. It is the design inside. It's not traditional, it's very modern. A lot of people really like that. For the Caribbean, 
or for warmer climbs, this boat is gonna tick a lot of boxes. Why would I say that? If you're in the Caribbean, you want a lot of ventilation, you want a big open cockpit, and you want a light to medium displacement boat that is gonna go in light winds. This ticks all of those boxes. And as an instructor once said to me, you don't want a heavy displacement boat that doesn't go along in light winds, that doesn't have a huge cockpit if you are sailing in the tropics. So this does tick a lot of boxes. And would I consider this if I was going to the Caribbean? Of course I would. In fact, for those of you who don't know, before we chose Ruby Rose, we shortlisted the Hansa 385, ended up buying the Southerly that was on our list. So I absolutely love this boat. I think that for the price that it is at, it is a really good kind of like, let's call it luxury budget option. So Hansa 418, love it. Let us know what you think about it. Leave it in the comments down below and again, we're going to be back pretty soon with another series of reviews detailing another boat that we would consider appropriate for long offshore pastures or for circumnavigation. So I hope you like this. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to the channel because it's an eclectic mix of reviews, banter and vlogs. That's what I've written down somewhere anyway. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. See you again soon. Goodbye.